بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله ما بعد وحبب من شئت فإنك مفارقه Yesterday we started a discussion Imam Ghazali rahimullah shares a piece of advice which is extracted from a hadith which is based upon three very profound statements Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said or he was told, Ya Muhammad, Ishma shi'ta fa innaka mayyitun. Live as long as you want, or as you want, for indeed you will die. The next statement was, Wahbib man shi'ta fa innaka mufariquhu. Love whomever you want, for indeed you will separate from them and depart from them. Here, the advice that is being imparted sheds light upon the reality and nature of things. The nature of things is that they disappear. They vanish, they're not constant, they're temporal And that any association we have with things will always be based upon this temporal nature So if we're attached to homes and our cars and our material objects All of this will depart from us one day And that is why the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith mentioned that when a person dies Three things follow him and two of them return while one remains with him the encouragement in this hadith is to befriend basically and make friends and association with things that are going to be constant and things that are going to be with you at all times and that is your good deeds. So Rasulullah's encouragement is that we enjoy doing good deeds and that we love good deeds. Mahabba, the term that is used in this hadith and habba which means seed have the same root letters. Love is an emotion that is deeply rooted and implanted in the heart. Just like seeing is a emotion or expression that we perform with our eyes, loving is an emotion, an expression that is expressed by the heart. And all types of love are not bad because Allah also expresses love in the Quran. In Allah you hibbu tawabin wa you hibbu mutatahirin. In Allah you hibbu muhsinin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about loving the muhsineen, the righteous. But what we have to explore is that when we love something, is that love beneficial for us? Is it harmful for us? Is it a true type of love or is it a false type of love? These are the types of questions that we have to ask. And then the aspect or the object that I am attaching my love to, is this something that is worth attaching my love to? Or is this material and provisions that will simply pass? Because certain things we find desirable because they have been made desirable to us. But they are merely benefits restricted to this worldly life. Allah mentions in Surah Ali Imran, Zuyuna lil nasi hubbu shahawati min al-nisa wal baneen wal qanatir al muqantara wal dhahab wal fidda wal khil al musawama wal an'am wal harth. A long list, Allah says, the opposite gender. Excess, excessive children, uh, men like that, the sisters don't, right? Men would like to have 10, 10 children, 15 children. Some men, most men, okay? It was a sign of manhood in one, once upon a time too, to have more children. So, and to have mines and all of these uh, you know, uh, natural resources of gold and silver, marked horses, horses, Animals, harth, produce and crops Allah says the desire for these things have been beautified for you But they are merely provisions of the worldly life In another place in Surah At-Tawbah Allah says If the love for your parents, your children, your brethren, your spouses, your tribe, your wealth That you have gathered, that you fear that would, that would go, go out of stock all of these things and your homes that you are pleased with if all of these items and objects are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger and striving in His way then wait for Allah's command to come this verse of Quran is highlighting the importance of love for that which is long lasting if we look at the story of Ibrahim السلام, in the Quran فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلُ رَآ كَوْكَبَا قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي فَلَمَّا أَفَلَ قَالَ لَا أُحِبُّ الْآفِلِينَ very profound statement 
Ibrahim alayhi salam's statement is a very profound statement. Probably you can say the, it's the, the essence. It's a foundational statement. Because he was wondering over the creations of Allah and he was searching for the truth. And he sees a star and he believes that the beauty of this star that has overtaken him is his Lord. But when the star disappears, he remembers that that which disappears does not deserve love. فَلَمَّا أَفَلَ قَالَ لَا أُحِبُّ الْآفِلِينَ how can I attach myself to the one that vanishes, that disappears? Whereas the one who is in control of the heavens and the earth, his rahmah, his benevolence, his control, his qudra, his ilm, none of this ever leaves the administration of the heavens and the earth. So it led him to the realization that the things that disappear are not worth attaching to. And that the one who is always constant, Pre-eternal, pre-existing, and eternal, Allah Jalla wa Ala is the worth, is the one worth attaching to. Love for Allah and His Messenger is a requirement of faith. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. None of you is a true believer until I become more beloved to him than his children, his parents, and all people. In a hadith. It's mentioned that uh, Umar anhu once said that I love you, O Rasulullah, more than anyone except myself, except myself, which is natural and normal for a person to love themselves more than anybody else. Rasulullah said that you are not a true believer until you love me even more than you love yourself. And Umar anhu, after a brief moment, said, O Rasulullah, I love you more than myself too. And Rasulullah said, now, O Umar, your faith is complete. And the ulama say that, how was it that Umar whose love for Rasulullah suddenly developed to be greater than love for himself? It was because of the tawajjuh of Rasulullah the barakah of being in his presence. And Rasulullah's focus upon him that led his love to change and develop instantly. But that love that we have for Allah and his messenger, when we analyze it and compare it to other loves that we have, it's always a love that it will be superior and should be superior. Because when we divide Mullah Ali Qari, rahimullah, who was one of the commentators of Mishkat, he divides love into three categories. He says, either there is a natural love, or there is an intellectual love, or a love that is based on Iman. He says your natural love are love for things that you can't control. Your parents, your children, your spouse, and, and the people that you love naturally. He says an intellectual love is like something that you know, that you don't really like, but it makes sense to you to love that thing or to like it. And he gives an example of a medicine for a sick patient. You're a sick patient, you don't like the medicine naturally. Naturally, it's not very tasteful to you. And now you get berry flavor as well, mashallah. Especially children get cherry flavor and berry flavor medicines. Right. But that, it might not taste good to you naturally, but aqlan, intellectually, logically, you think if I take this medication, I'm going to get better. So your personal need or your desires at that point was trumped, and you prioritize your logical love for your over your natural love that you have or natural dislike. And then he says a third type of love is imani love. Love based on Iman. Love based on Iman, like Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi radiallahu anhu says, when he was sent as a delegate, delegate from the Quraysh at the time of Hudaybiyah. And we know the story of Hudaybiyah. And the spits, they would gather his spit and wipe their faces. <coughs> Subhanallah. That was the love that they had for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And by the way, the fudulat of Anbiya and these types of fluids of this were not considered to be Najis, remember that. So if you hear an incident about a Sahabi swallowing the blood of Rasulullah that's not Najis. That's not Najis. That is love. Rasulullah was not Najis. We have to remember that our blood is Najis. But of course Rasulullah was not. So this was the love that they had for Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa What was that love? It was Imani love. And we see examples of that also in Badr. I believe it was Badr when Abu Ubaidah radiallahu anhu found his father as an opponent in the field. 
And he took his father's, uh, if I remember correctly, he took his father's uh, life. So he took his father's life in the battlefield. This is Iman and his love for Allah and his Rasul trumping his natural love for his father. So we see examples of this as well. And when this type of love enters the heart, it makes our Iman taste sweet and our A'mal also taste really sweet. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said three types of people or three qualities when the person has in them he will taste the sweetness of Iman and one of them is that Allah and His Rasul be beloved to him more than anything else. Allah and His Rasul be beloved to him more than anything else. So Umar radiallahu anhu when he says I love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I'm going to end with this Umar radiallahu anhu when he says I love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than I love myself how can that be possible? Think about it for a moment. If I asked you a question, do you have full and total control over your life? And do you think that every single decision you make for yourself is going to be of benefit? Could you answer me positively? First of all, we don't have control over our lives. Secondly, we have all made bad decisions for ourselves before. Yes or no? Can Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever misguide us? Even our parents, they love us. Sometimes they can make a bad decision, though it's sincere. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can never ever misguide us, nor can he tell us something that's bad for us or bring us any harm. So why should we not love the man who is only of benefit to us more than ourselves when we can't even protect ourselves from our own destruction and harms? This is Umar radiallahu this is what struck Umar radiallahu at the time. And this is how we have to be thinking about things. Allah and Rasul sallallahu will only tell us something that is good for us. Ma min shay'in yuqarribukum ila al-jannah wa yuba'idukum min an-nar illa nabba'tukum illa nabba'tukum bihi Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Nothing brings you closer to jannah and prevents harm from you except I have informed you about it. That was his concern. Our salvation, our safety, our peace, our success. And he was guided by Allah, therefore nothing can be false, nothing can be wrong in anything he imparted to us. So that's why our love for Rasulullah should always be greater. So let's attach ourselves and love something that's going to be constant, eternal, that's going to benefit us inshallah for good. And not these temporary types of loves that the benefit of which is restricted to this worldly life, but then when we depart it has no يسلسي وبنفت سواس أقول خالي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه